we introduced uh, classical probability theories uh, and uh, the stochastic vector, which describes a probability distribution. So based on that, we can easily introduce quantum states. So a quantum state is just like a stochastic vector. You can write it as a column vector. But the big difference is that you are not restricted to real numbers and non-negative real numbers because the, the entries in this vector are complex values. And the normalization of this vector doesn't happen in the one norm, it happens in the two norm. So you're still normalizing to one, but now the square sum of the absolute values of the entries is what adds up to one, as opposed to just the absolute values adding up to one. This is the simplest possible quantum state. It has two possible outcomes. This is often uh, referred to as a qubit. And the superposition is nothing, just the expansion of this vector in a basis. So for instance, if we expand it in the canonical basis like this, then we can introduce a notation for the one zero vector and the zero one vector. So the one zero is, is called the zero cat. And the zero one, the second basis vector is called the, the one cat. And this notation itself, so the, the vertical bar and this little angle after the name of the, the vector is called the cat. So this, this gives you the idea, the same idea as, as in a stochastic vector that you have put an arrow on top of the vector and it will, it will help us in the syntax of writing calculations uh, on quantum states. So what you see here is the superposition of the zero and the one cat with different coefficients, a0 and a1. So these coefficients are called probability amplitudes. They no longer represent probabilities directly, as in the case of a stochastic vector, but it's the absolute value squared of these values what gives you a probability. So for instance, you get the outcome zero with probability a0 squared, and similarly, the outcome one with probability uh, of the absolute value of a1 squared. And once you get an outcome zero, you know that the state is in the zero state. And similarly, if you get the outcome one, afterwards the state is going to be in the state one. This is called the collapse of the wave function. A quantum state is also called a wave function. And basically, once you pull out a sample of the distribution and you get an outcome, and make that observation, then you get a deterministic state afterwards, after the random outcome. So you can also think about it in a more geometric way. So now you have a two-dimensional complex space, which would take up four dimensions to, to visualize, but we have this restriction on the degree of freedom. So we can have some three-dimensional object representing these uh, qubit states. So this is where the block sphere helps us. So block sphere is this three-dimensional sphere, but it has a slightly different geometry than a normal sphere. So here, the north pole is identified with the zero cat, and the south pole is identi identified with the one cat. It's a little bit unusual because these two basis vectors are actually orthogonal, and, and it gives the illusion as if they were lying on the same line. So just keep in mind that orthogonality is a little bit different in this sphere. And now every single point on the surface of this sphere is, is a qubit state. So basically you have a much larger representative power if you compare it, for instance, with classical probability distributions, where every single uh, uh, probability distribution lies on this straight line as opposed to this large two-dimensional surface of the block sphere. Now, a couple of things that we can do with quantum states, which we cannot do, for instance, in, in uh, classical digital computers. One is called interference. So interference is this strange phenomenon where the different basis vectors and the coefficients interact uh, in your calculations. So imagine that you act on your zero cat with this particular matrix. Remember that, that in uh, your transform stochastic vectors with matrices, with stochastic matrices to ensure that the result is also a stochastic vector, a probability distribution. 
Quantum states are also acted on by these operators and they fulfill certain conditions that we will learn later. Now just accept that this is a valid operation and it transforms the zero cat into the equal superposition of the zero and the one cat. And if you were acting on the one cat, the only difference would be that it would introduce a negative sign to the zero cat. And what's interesting is if you now take this outcome and you apply the same operation on it, that's what we are doing here. So I take this outcome and I apply the same operation on it. Then something interesting is happening. So this is a linear operator, so I can pull out the 1 over square root 2 to the front. So it simplifies to 1 half. And I can also take the matrix operation basis vector by basis vector in the superposition. So I act on the first one. From that I get uh, the superposition of 0 and 1, just like here. The same thing. And then I have the one cat. So I'm going to get this outcome, which we calculated here. And now if you look at this, these two cancel out, which means that you get a deterministic outcome by applying the operator again. So this is a, an example of interference. So the, the probability amplitudes of the zero cat destructively interfere. They vanish from the superposition and you get the deterministic one outcome.